Hey guys, so in this video, I will show you how to create a Google Cloud Computer instance. And in this one, we are creating a Linux machine and we'll be logging inside this machine once it is created and we'll be running a small web server inside it. Okay, so you will go to Computer Engine as I just did it. I will go to the menu and I'll go to Computer Engine or I can even simply search for it from here. I can say Compute Engine and it will take me to the same screen that I'm on right now. And then I will say Create from here. Okay, now this name should be in small characters. So let's say I name it as Linux and hyphen web server and web server, let's say 001. Okay, I can add label. Uh, let's say I put a label saying environment and my environment is production. Okay, now labels can be really useful for getting a proper billing report. Okay, uh, the region can be Iowa or I can choose any region of my choice. I'll keep it in Iowa and I'll keep it in Central One Data Center. I can cho choose from the machine configuration and the machine, machine family according to my use case. Okay, that is a very good table which describes these virtual machines. Uh, that is an occupation which talks about which virtual machines to talk use for which kind of application so if you're running databases you will probably go with memory optimized if you're running some sort of sap application maybe you can go with compute optimized so for now i'll go with an e2 series and i'll choose the size of the virtual machine to be two virtual cpu and four gb of ram and then i can select the operating system by selecting a boot disk so let's say i want to change my boot disk by default it is debian I want to create CentOS, I will select CentOS from here. And let's say I want to do CentOS 7. I'll select CentOS 7 from here. I'll say, okay. Then I can say, allow HTTP traffic. So since we are installing a web server, I want to, I would like to do this. So I'll say, allow HTTP traffic. I can go to advanced settings. Okay, uh, okay, I missed this one. So you can also define your service account. So service account can be really handy when you want to talk to other services by a API. So let's say I want to talk to Google Cloud Storage, then I can allocate a service account which has a proper role associated to it. And uh, using that service account and role, your computer engine or any application inside your comp computer engine may be able to talk to the uh, compute cloud storage like Google Cloud Storage. So it is a way of providing authentication and authorization to two services within Google Cloud. So uh, you can allocate service account. I have a dedicated lecture for this. I'll show, I will talk about this in the other lecture, which talks about identity and access management. And I can go to advanced and I can say, I can select various settings from here. I can select reservation if I have any, if I want to put up a startup script, okay. I can put up a startup script over here. If uh, I can put that, I can say, if I want to be, wanted this to be in preemptible instance, I can go with preemptible options. Okay, I can select uh, host maintenance, virtual machine should be migrated. So it will perform a live migration for me. Okay, uh, if, uh, and this option select basically talks about uh, if there are terminated non user initiated reason. Okay, so it will automatically restart the virtual machine. So I can select this. Uh, I can go to security and I can enable secure boot if I want to, uh, I can put my SSH keys. If I have a different SSH keys, if I have some project wide SSH keys, I can put those SSH keys and this SSH keys would be used. I can use the private part of this SSH key to log in inside my virtual machine. So that can be done. I would be showing you this in the next video. Okay, how to put an SSH key of your own over here. I can select additional disk. So, okay, I can select, I can put an additional disk I want to by, uh, clicking on add new disk, I can also attach an existing disk which is created. I can also uh, change my encryption. So by default, everything is encrypted in Google. So what you can do is uh, it is using Google Manage Key for encryption. Like if you don't want it to use Google Manage Key for encryption, you can probably choose your own key. Okay, and using that key, that now that key would be in, would be stored in this service. This say Google Cloud Key Management Service, and from there you can use that key to encrypt your data. You can select that. Then under networking option, if you want to deploy this virtual machine into some uh, different VPC, okay, I can do that as well. 
I can I can select from a different VPC or different network and subnet and I can deploy it in different subnet. We will be talking about these settings more in more detail when we go to networking part of the section of this course. And I can also select sole tenancy. So if I want this virtual machine to be on a dedicated host kind of a scenario where uh, other other people virtual machine would, wouldn't be running it. It would be dedicated, that host would be dedicated to you. So basically, if I don't want to launch this virtual machine in a uh, multi-tenant kind of environment, I can select sole tenancy and my virtual machine would be deployed on a dedicated host in that scenario. Now this can come handy whenever you have some compliance or licensing needs. Okay, I can select this uh, in those scenarios. Okay, so this is how you, these are the various settings we can use for creating compute engine instance. And once I have selected everything, I can simply say create. And I can also click on this so to get a command line equivalent for it. So I can run the same command to create an uh, Google Cloud instance. Okay. I would just need to copy paste this command into Cloud Shell or maybe local version of G Cloud installed on your machine. and uh, it will do the same work. It will create a virtual machine for us. Okay, now once the virtual machine is created, you have various options. You can open Cloud Shell and type as a command, put the public IP, and you would be able to log in inside this virtual machine. Or you can click on this. You can click on SSH and it will log on to your virtual machine. Now, by default, whenever you create a Linux virtual machine, your SSH keys are a new SSH keys is generated and that SSH key is uploaded to your instance. And one copy is uh, saved inside uh, the Google Cloud platform itself, okay? So you can always go with this option or else you can go with an option where you will mention your own SSH key. Uh, we'll be talking about that, how to do it, how to automate the process of using own SSH key, okay? Or if you have uh, like multiple users and you want different SSH key for each and every user, then how to update all those keys inside uh, compute instance. So we would be talking about that as well. Okay, uh, now, it, now probably my machine would be created. I'll click on SSH in this scenario and it will load a browser-based window over here. Okay, and as you can see, it is saying transferring SSH key to this virtual machine. So SSH key would be generated and the SSH key would be transferred to the virtual machine in back end. This is, this is like, this is behind the curtains which is happening inside Google Cloud Platform. Okay, so yes, I'm logged inside my virtual machine here. Now <coughs> I can elevate my privileges and let's say I want to install Apache. So I'll say game install HTTPD hyphen Y. This will install Apache web server. On my virtual machine, you can see it is happening. Okay. Scanning the dependencies and installing every dependencies for this find. And here we are, it is installed. Now, what I can do is I can create a simple hello world page. Hello world. And let's echo this in bad dub 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 slash HTML directory. And I'll create a page known as index.html. Okay, so this is the default directory for Apache. And once you have done this, you can say systemctl start httpd. And I can also say Check config or CSK, uh, CSK config. Okay, HTTPD on. So this will make sure whenever you restart this virtual machine, HTTPD service is restarted automatically. Okay, and we are done with this. Now what I'll do is I'll just browse this public IP, and I'm able to see the hello world page what we just created. Okay, so. In this video, we learned how to create an Linux machine. We saw various uh, option in Compute Engine for creating a virtual machine. And then we saw how to log in inside a virtual machine. And then we also talked about uh, installing a simple web, web server inside our virtual machine. This is it for this video, guys. <laughs> Thanks for watching.